looking at resining my coasters. So there is a, these are all my the Liparat ceramic coasters that uh, come in a nice set like this. Now these particular ones, are, uh, they're all sublimate, which they've got a special coating on it, which you, you'd normally use for printing. So these ones are, are glossy. So it does mean that uh, it's not as absorbent as some others. So I'm just bringing out a full range of absorbent and also um, ones that are glazed, better, which are better for alcohol inks. So these ones here, I got them thinking that they might be okay for alcohol inks, and they're better than the absorbent ones, but they're still, they still do absorb the paint a little bit, which is what you want, actually, for pouring art and others, because you want it to, to come in. So you still probably should um, coat them with uh, something to, to seal them if you're going to do alcohol inks. So I've just been wiping these because some of the, this one's done with um, paint, acrylic paint. This one was done with a paint marker. This one has um, has ink on it, so I'm certainly not going to clean that with alcohol, or it's going to wipe right off. This one was paint. This one here was um, uh, pouring uh, acrylic paint pouring, and I have actually cleaned that with alcohol just because it's been sitting around longer than the other ones as well. So I'm going to just show you um, not only how to mix the resin, but also a couple of different techniques for, for pouring it, uh, pouring the resin on. So here's some, here's some that I've already done and uh, that have been resin. And I, I just did take the resin down the, down the side to, um, with my finger didn't take these up so I'm now going to have to get the drips off the bottom of them. So what you really want to do, especially if you're coming down the side, is you really need to take the back. There are no shortcuts with resin. The better prepared you are, um, it's got, you, you're not going to regret it. <laughs> you're going to regret it if you don't prepare. So the main thing about resin, I'd say, is that you've got to think about what you're going to use the coasters for. If you want them to be handling heat, then you do need to have something that is a high temperature resin that's going to handle high temperatures. So this one is apparently quite good. I've been using it. I haven't actually done tests myself, but I've seen tests of other people have done to show that it doesn't leave a hot um, ring, a ring when you put a hot drinks on. So I'm using that one for my coasters, using a number of other resins for other things. And I found it quite good, actually. It, it mixes well. So I'm, the key thing about mixing your resin is you really need to be accurate, else the resin may not set because you're putting the hardener into the, into the resin mixture. So have something that you can measure accurately on. Now some resins are one to one, others, this one is actually two, two to one. It's going to be obvious by the size of the bottle, but just read the instructions. So I'm going to mix my resin and I'll come back. So the other thing I wanted to mention is safety. So you should really use a respirator if you're using resin. You certainly should be in a ventilated area, particularly if you're not using a respirator. Uh, and obviously resins are different to, some resins are different to others. So you can get one with uh, no VOCs or PVAs. Um, if you haven't got one of those other devices, you may just be able to find a little disposable respirator, which is KN, KN95. Better than nothing. So to stir, you can use a wooden stick. Apparently it does let some release some air bubbles or you can use a silicon stick. Just a and one of the things about stirring, you don't want to be stirring really hard and putting air bubbles in. So you just want to do a smooth stir. And then you need to every now and again just make sure that all the, the resin that's on the edge 
is mixed in well. So go around the edge, scraping it in, because you need to make sure that each part is mixed evenly with each other. And if you don't have it mixed properly, mixed well, or don't have the right ratios, then it may not set. You end up with a sticky mess. So you need to stir for three minutes. So I'll do that off camera. So you may see bubbles in your resin. You will see bubbles in your resin. In fact, I, I dare to say this one is actually fairly low bubbles compared to some. Now, don't worry, you could be able to pop them um, by heating them when they're on the surface. I can see a couple of little bits of black, which I think might have come off this new, um, this new stirring stick. So I'll just try and get those before I start. If you really don't want any extra foreign things in your resin, there's one. Everyone's sort of halfway down here. Let's see if I can get it. Just pushed it down. There it is. Oh, well, okay. Put that out. Okay. So I'm going to mostly I'm going to do a technique where I'm going to do a dome. So I'm making sure that they're level and I'm going to try and not go over the sides. I haven't actually taped the backs of these ones. So I've got pretty good, strong motivation not to go over the sides and make little drips. It can be quite hard to get off the um, off the ceramic coaster. Let's see what happens with these. all at once. Might be better just easier to see on this one. Because I haven't painted over the sides of these, I just thought that the dome dome technique would work really well. Whereas when I've painted over the sides, Often I'll, 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 I'll resin the sides as well, although you don't have to. Not just on this and these, but I, I, one of the things I love about using resin is when you pop it on, it just pops the colour. But we're, <laughs> we're talking about fairly uh, monochromatic ones here. Anyway, you think I think you get the idea about doing that. So with this other one here, I'm going to do the sides. And what I would often do is get some resin on it and just run my finger around on the sides to, to cover it. Uh, and then later on, I may just go around with this as well. This this little um silicon gadget does really smooth it out and as you heat it and, and the run comes down you just need to go around again and just smooth it out so that you don't have drip lines down the side. So I'll just finish this one and then we'll get some heat onto it. I've been finding with my canvases 
that I am, and that these are, I've really been heating about three times just to try and get the bubbles out. See those bubbles pop. Okay, so I've done them all just now, and I just wanted to show you on this one, which I'm taking, I've taken around and around the sides, is that it's really on this one you can really, really try and come, just come right over and make sure all those edges are done. They're the bits that are going to get you into trouble, so you can sort of wipe it off very carefully on that, on those edges. Now, if you go over like that, you just got to come and wipe it again. Unless you want that to be not non-drip there. Just really want to make sure those edges are done. When I'm doing a canvas, I end up just sort of coming around and really just putting an extra layer around around those edges to make sure they're all done. I think just about every time I've turned it on to do one, I've come back and done the others, just a little bit. But I can see, just on this one here, there's just not much happening, there's a little gap here. So I'm just going to come back and put a little bit there. And I'm just looking at different angles to see that there's no other little little gap. Sometimes you put it there but it can pull away, particularly if they're not level. And I've got a feeling that these may not be perfectly level. What I would um, recommend when you're doing coasters is to put a board under it and level the board and then you're more likely to get it because it's really hard to get, I haven't got a little level so it's really hard to make sure and even if uh, that's right and even if it isn't right how do you, you're just propping one, one, one side up, it can be much harder to get this level perfectly than on a bigger piece where you can manipulate it from a number of different positions. Okay, so I just need to hit that, hit that where, I, where I put that on. And that, the heat just really um, makes it run more and it just really smooths it out. So I think I'm just about done with those and I've got some leftover resins I'll do something else. Okay, so other things to say while I'm thinking about um, about the resin is that you should wear gloves and particularly nitrate gloves to really protect your hands. I don't wear gloves when it comes to normal paint, but I certainly do with resin. Have some alcohol handy to wipe up, clean up with. I've just got some um, isopropyl alcohol here. That's the best thing if you get some on your on your body. You can wipe it with a cloth on that and a paper or a paper towel. Um, what else could tell you? So the resin, read the instructions, but it normally cures fully in about three days. And if you have tape on the back, you after somewhere between I reckon between fourteen and twenty four hours. Um, certainly less than 24. If you're very careful, you can hold the sides and get the tape off while the resin is still malleable a little bit before it goes really hard. Um, so I'm just going to take my gloves off so that I can hold the camera. So one of the things, if you've got a matching set, you might try and be conscious about how much you're actually putting on so that they're so there we go, there you can see that. Just got that layer of resin on top. It's not running over the sides. Might put a little bit more on some of these. And this one, I have got it off the, going over the sides and see how it's dripping. Well, as long as the drips are happening, clinging to the tape underneath, that doesn't matter. Uh, but I probably will just go around again and just take some of those 
make, just make sure the sides are all covered and the drips aren't running. Actually, they're all on the bottom, so that's okay. They're not sitting like running down the sides. They're just sitting there on the bottom. They'll be able to come off with the tape. As your resin dries, as it cures, you need to make sure that any dust particles or hairs and things in the atmosphere flying around in your in your environment don't land and, and get permanently into the resin. So these little uh, netting covers are a great option just to cover, cover your coasters with. As an alternative, you can use an upside down box that you make sure is dust free. So these coasters have um, resin lovely. We've got the just a gentle dome of resin on the top. And most of them haven't got any marks on the back, and so I didn't have but have to tape them. I've just done that. A couple of them have got little um, little marks where the resin has has soaked in. Some of them are just soaked in marks, and we'll be fine. We'll put the cork on. It's hard to see, but this one's just got a little drip here. Uh, you might just sand that. I've got to. I'll try. Have to test and see how the sanding works on. On, on this, but I think it'll be fine too. Just put the cork. The cork will probably bring it bring it out to about that to about that spot. So I'm um, I'm really happy happy with these. One of the things I notice noticed is that because um, these have got a nice white coating on the coaster, and so that stayed stayed lovely and lovely and white where I've taped where I've put on the the blue paint and I probably only really had a bit over a week to cure so I may have done the resin a bit sooner than I'd normally like to but it feels like it's just changed the color of the uh, that's underneath there it's whether it's bled a little bit or it may just be the reflection of the blue in the resin so I'll have to do find out as I do some other do some other pieces Okay, so here's my here's my acrylic pouring piece that I did. It's it's it's, it's nice, and I did resin the sides. Just pushed push the resin along the sides. So what this has got on the back is is the tape, and you which is needed for those for those drips, which has been good. So you need to take it off less than 24 hours for. Um, while the resin is still not fully cured, just makes it a bit more uh, that, that bit more flexible that you can just try and get in there in a minute. <laughs> Hopefully that's going to work. There we go, and just pull off, pull it off, pull that tape and those resin drips off. If you're finding it a bit a bit hard, you can always heat. Heat the, that resin again, but you really want to do this within 24 hours where it's hard enough that you can touch it without putting finger marks and dents into it, but before it totally goes rock hard. Now you can see that I've got, I've got um, paint on the back, so those nice cork bits will go on there and cover that up. Just looking for one. Here we go. So here's the cork. So I'll just be able to, I'll just clean that up a little bit, make sure that it's going to stick well. And then I'll, um, so these are peel and stick somehow in here. There we go. Uh, and you can always add a bit more glue if you just really want to make sure. Um, I bet I haven't really done enough of testing of the cork stick, but I would think it's, uh, they look pretty good. But you can always add some more more glue, and there we are. We're all set with our. When I put that on, lovely um, coasters ready to go. And these one, this one will go with my other other similar similar coasters.